We're going to talk about leadership and leadership vitality. And uh, something, in fact, everything talk I'm giving this week is on this topic uh, because I think it's so crucial for healthcare professionals and is something that we normally do not get during our training. And yet when you get out of your training, people are going to expect you to be a leader in your family, in your church, in your community, uh, in your practice, which is a business, and uh, in our profession. But how do we get these skills? Look at these uh, two guys up here on the screen. Uh, anybody recognize those? Some went to school might. That's right. It's the Mayo brothers. Father was a frontier physician, uh, lived out here on the plains. They put together the first integrated clinic model, established residencies, the first place that ever had a residency in the United States in that model. The whole concept of shared medical records, which was foreign to that time. Uh, at that time when they started, they decided 40% of their profits would go towards research. They specialized in hard to treat diseases and today, there's 1,700 doctors in the Mayo Clinic. In fact, they've achieved the highest quality at one of the lowest cost. If you take Medicare patients in their last three years of lives, life, the Mayo brothers at the Mayo Clinic that they established, that model uh, actually treats those patients for 54% of what comparable costs are in nearby clinics and hospitals, and the quality of care is higher. They pay their medical doctors a fixed salary. There's no incentive to just see more and more patients. They get together collaboratively and discuss their patient's case. Isn't that a novel concept? The rheumatologist, the primary care, the surgeon, whatever, all get together and actually talk about you instead of reading a record and making decisions. Part of what they did was why? Because of leadership. They did something that no one else had done. So how do we go about it? Well, the Bible talks about it in Romans 12, 8. It says, if God has given you leadership ability, uh, take the responsibility seriously. I hate to tell you this, guys, but all of you have leadership ability. You wouldn't be where you are today. Now, some of you have a lot of natural ability. Some don't have very much. And one of the things we need to understand is we can develop that. We know in our country, without wise leadership, the Bible tells us, our nation will fall. But it's not just our country. Medicine's going to flatline as well. I know you all have heard ad nauseum all the problems that are in medicine with financial issues, with reimbursement, with malpractice, with a host of different issues. How are we going to get out of this mess? It's going to take some leaders. And I think Christian leaders in particular are going to be the key to solving what we're dealing with. The future of medicine depends on you. Sorry, you thought you just had to practice. But to have a practice, the future of medicine is going to have to change. And that's why leadership is so important. So how do we build leadership? How do we begin? Uh, amongst everything else you've got to do, how do you become the leader that God has designed you to be? Let's talk a little bit about leadership. If you're a natural leader, good. If not, become a learner of leadership. Find role models, people that you admire. Begin to read a few books. Uh, look and take, uh, as you look at those people, say, how are they doing this compared to what I've read uh, to become the leader you need to be? It's, it's a constant study. It's not something where you take a course and it's all over, or you read a book and it's all over because a lot of leadership is learned by experience. You learn something, you apply it, you learn more, you apply it. As you apply it, you get experience, you learn more. That's the way leadership works. Real leaders bring real change. A lot of people want to be managers, administrators. Uh, they tweak the system. They, they tend to, to, to make it a little bit better, but leaders transform the system. They take it to a, a quantum leap up you think of great leaders like Churchill uh, during World War II. Chamberlain was a great manager, administrator, and then a war happened. Hitler appeared and the world was falling apart and he did not have the leadership ability to lead England into that era. And Churchill was somewhat abrasive and get the job done type of guy. They didn't even want him on the scene until there was a crisis and there needed to be some change. And he came in. What happened after World War II? 
They threw him out because people had so much change they didn't want anymore. Uh, but leaders bring real change. Leaders are never content with the present state of affairs. In other words, as I tell my staff, there's a better way to do everything, and we're going to find it. It's always, there's, there's a better way to do this. Never be satisfied with the way things are. And it may be very simple things from your rotation that you're doing, and how can we do this better as a group to... Uh, as you get into your practice and the processes are put together of how you're taking care of patients and how your staff are treating them at the front desk and or the, the group that you're working for and how well uh, the integration has taken place. Leaders are always looking for opportunities to find change. And we've talked about managers tweak the system, leaders transform it. And it's worth the effort. It's worth the effort. You know, I know you feel like this guy up here, like your brain is exploding, you know, or melting, whatever you want to interpret that picture as. Uh, but if you daily devote yourself to the study of leadership and develop the skills and put yourself in a place where you're going to have uh, some experiences and get uh, uh, opportunities, uh, you'll become a better leader. I always had some natural lead leadership abilities, I guess. I mean, you know, in high school, I was elected the president of my uh, class and some of that may have happened to you in college same thing happened and and uh, in medical school yes and residency I was chief resident but really I cut my leadership teeth when I got to Africa because there was so much change needed that all of a sudden I found myself immersed in it the fact that my medical skills were excellent and I could do so many things to help people weren't going to solve the big problems the fact that I could do a good C-section wasn't going to make a difference in the fact that we didn't have clean water in the hospital, 24-hour electricity, that we didn't have enough nurses. We had six nurses in our 125-bed hospital with any formal training. We had kerosene lanterns hanging in the ward at night. Kids would die for the lack of the fact you just couldn't see they were sick. Uh, one day we had 482 patients in our 125-bed hospital. You say, how do you do that? You put two to three patients in a bed and then you start putting them on the floor. The problems that we had were not going to be solved by great medical skills. Just as we look at other problems that we face, your medical skills are going to be a given. Your dental skills are going to be a given. But leadership is going to be important to bring change into individual lives and into the lives of those you serve. Good leaders have loyal followers. And before they will follow you, people must what? They must respect you. You're going to follow somebody you don't respect? It just won't happen. And what will make them respect you is the bedrock of integrity. And bedrock of integrity. Safeguard your integrity. Everything else is replaceable. A tornado comes through your neighborhood, takes your house, takes your car. Be thankful you didn't lose your integrity. Because that's going to be a lot harder to replace. In fact, you can name people, all of us could, of people that we respected and thought were leaders and their integrity went and uh, they no longer were in that position of leadership. Uh, to achieve the strongest influence and the longest impact as a leader, integrate integrity into every facet of your personal and professional life. Now what that word integrity, we think about being righteous, that's to be a synonym for it, but is also living your life integrated living your life integrated. When you think of people you respect, it's not just the fact that they may be a great physician and good with patients, but they have balance in their life with their family, their community. They put God first in their life. There is an integration that has taken place and you see them as a whole and complete person. Uh, imitate a leader whose focus is on their integrity and not their image. Image-driven leadership can be very dangerous. The Bible says that. That's not my quote. It's found over in Psalm 25, 21. And when you think of people, and I, I've worked alongside some, quote, leaders, that when you got to know them, there was very little respect or integrity there. They had a great image. Oh, my goodness, everybody thought they were wonderful. You wanted to pull those people aside. Let me tell you the real story of what's going on. Because it was all image, and they're just waiting to have a fall. Second thing about is to have courage, like that. To have courage. 
the courageous can accomplish the outrageous. Uh, my wife teases me. I guess it's my leadership genes. She said, honey, all somebody has to do is say to you it's impossible, and you say, okay, let's go do that. <laughs> you know, because I want that challenge. I, I want that to conquer that mount, uh, mountain. And courage is contagious. No one follows the fearful. They're drawing towards the daring. Uh, stand up for what is right, uh, demonstrating the courage of your convictions, and often if you stand, others will rise up. And when you think of the great heroes of history, that's what they did. Uh, good leadership means to be courageous. When I was in my residency, I was chief resident. My last year of residency, the hospital was bought by a commercial group, and within two months, they fired our director of medical education, uh, who everybody loved, and his wife was the director of OB. And so we were gonna lose her too. Residents were beginning to call other programs, trying to leave, and here I was, chief resident, with 40 residents, and the whole thing was disintegrating. And I got them all together, called a meeting, got them together, and said, we're gonna change this. How are you gonna change this, man? I mean, look, they own the hospital. We're gonna change this. I won't give you all the details, but we wrote a letter, sent it to every private practice doctor that was at the hospital and had a resident hand deliver it. And within one week, we had a meeting where all the doctors of the community came in, called in the administrators of the hospital and said, if you don't hire him back by Monday, there'll be no patients in this hospital Tuesday night. Those were the old days. <laughs> you know, and, and I won't go all the details about that happened, but, but it was courage to stand up and say, no, we don't have to accept this. They were doing this based on commercial financial reasons, and they were gonna destroy the training program and the quality of care at that hospital. Next thing about it is vision. Good leaders have vision. Uh, they have over the horizon radar. They predict what others think is unpredictable. Uh, your job as a leader is to communicate such a compelling vision that it's a magnetic force attracting others to join your cause. When I got to Tenwick, got involved in leadership, and we had so many quality issues, and a lot of things seemed like we couldn't control. I began preaching the vision, we're gonna be the best mission hospital in Africa. That's where we're heading, come on, let's go. And here's the first step, here's the second step, here's the third step. And begin to get out front, leading the charge, casting that vision that got people on board. At the same time, if you push people too hard, you will run right over them, but if you've, they will thrive if you get out in front and pull them along by example, by charisma, and by vision. Um, CMDA, talk to my staff, you'll see it around the office. Transform doctors, transforming the world. That's where we're heading. When we accomplish our mission, that's what it's gonna look like. Uh, casting that vision. Most people are more emotional than rational. That's why uh, connecting to the heart is more important than connecting to the head. And that's why vision is so important in leader if you're gonna take people through change and where they need to go.